Yeah. It says it's setting it up. Let's see. And you know what? I always talk through this part and then I end up, this end, this part ends up in the broadcast. I was going to say, mine says it's now streaming. <laughs> we are now streaming. Hello, Fit Pros. It's so good to see you. Okay, you guys, you know the deal. I've got this going through Zoom. You guys have tried some of this with your virtual classes. And then I've got Facebook over here. So you're going to see me fiddling with this because I'm pulling it up. Um, you guys say hello, please drop something in the comments, say hello. I really want to see who's here and um, know. I hope you guys are ready for some business talk. It is business time. Did you guys see the post I put up earlier with the flight of the Concords? Shannon, have you ever seen the, the flight of the Concords? It's business. It's business time. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound familiar. Yeah. He's got his business socks on because it's business time. I got my business socks on. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. Oh, I am here with Shannon Simmons. Shannon is here to talk to us about business setup. She is, I got her bio right here, and it is super impressive. 10 years working with small businesses. She's a certified profit first professional, which is something that I talked about on Tuesday. Profit First is um, something that has kept me in business and saved my butt so many times in so many ways. So she's a Profit First certified master, just certified Profit First professional. That's how we say that. Yeah. And, okay. <laughs> and also a certified QuickBooks pro professional. <laughs> advisor. <laughs> so you guys see how much of the back end stuff I do with my business. I'm really, really proficient in that. No, that's why we have Shannon here. So she's going to talk to us about things that you can do each day for five days that is going to get your business set up in 15 minutes a day. Yeah. So I am so excited to have you, Shannon. Thank you for being here. I'm going to switch to gallery view so that we are both large. Oh, also, I did not say in your bio, she works with fitness professionals and wellness businesses, and she has been a speaker at Mind Body Bold and um, also at the Rick Mayo Conference. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. So. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Lots of <laughs> several different places. Um, yeah. So that works. Uh, bold was just last year. So, and I'm going back to bold this coming this coming August, hopefully. August? Yeah. Where's it at? Uh, this time it's in New York City instead of the LA area where it was last year. So I'm excited for it. Very nice. Yeah, that's going to be really good. And East Coast because I'm East Coast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Very, that's going to be really exciting. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit more. We're, I'm excited to hear your topic and I know you've got five things we can do in five days. Tell us where you where you got these and, and how you came up with them. And Yeah, so I actually, um, I really just Googled like five things you would do to set up a business. And it was exactly the same five things that I was already thinking of. Um, so I really just went back to what did I do to set up my business? And it has been 12 years, um, but I actually did these in steps and pieces. And so um, I would definitely recommend doing some of them faster than I did them, which is really what I want to help you guys with today, because I know a lot of you are making the transition from being an employee or an independent contractor to going out on your own all of a sudden. And so um, just helping you make sure that everything's in place, that, that you don't get in trouble really is what it's about, because I know it's important to bring in money and put food on the table. Um, but it's also important to protect what you have so that you don't end up in trouble or in a lawsuit or something like that down the road. So that's, that's so true. You know, so this discussion and the Fit Pro show was really born out of the fact that we are all trying to get on for on and deliver virtual classes so that we can continue to serve our customers and our clients and our community. And, and so the the impetus was just how, how do we get out there? How do we start serving? How do we keep people in their classes so that they're not, you know, at home losing it? And, and in the meanwhile, getting fat and having a lot, not fat, unfit, unfit. 
um, <laughs> and having a lot of ground to cover back off once we get back into the gym. And so it was born out of that. And then a lot of us are discovering, hey, this is either something I want to continue to do because I love um, doing the virtual classes. My students are loving it. I think I have seniors that may be out of the gym longer than everybody else. They may be out of the gym for the next two years. I know I've got a yoga class full of ladies who are anywhere from 40 to 85 years old. And those 85 year olds may never wanna come back into the community center. And so I need to find a way to continue to serve them. So the Facebook Live and the YouTube Live those served a need, but now we have to start looking beyond that, especially if we're taking in money. How do we put our classes behind a paywall? And then how do we structure this whole thing so that when the tax man comes a coming next year, that we are not um, caught in an uncomfortable situation? So we are so excited what you, about what you have to say to us. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, Kelly, for having me. I'm glad we were able to get connected um, last week, really. Me as well. Yeah. So you want me to dive in? First Let's do it. Tip. Monday. What okay. do we do on Monday? Monday, first tip. You need to get what is called an EIN, so an employer identification number. That's going to be through your the federal website. Um, and then you all, it really means that you are a business. And when you are giving people, um, like when you get a 1099, a lot of times it'll have your social security number on it. Now you're going to have like a more official, it's your business social security number, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is really important to protect your own personal social security number because you don't want that out there when you're collecting payments and on your payment processor and things like that. Mm -hmm. You get asked for it way more than, than you would think. I've been asked for it just today, two or three times. Yep, exactly. And then right along with that is I also want you to get what's called an LLC. So I want you to form a limited liability company for yourself. That gets done through your state website, usually your state secretary, um, secretary of state within your state. It's a little bit different for every state, so I'm not going to go into a ton of details, but if you like Google how to form an LLC in your state, it's usually the top thing that comes up. Here's why this is important. It puts a barrier between your personal assets and your business assets. So if something happens in your business and one of your clients gets hurt, they can no longer come after your personal assets. That's huge because like I said, if you start generating income and revenue for yourself, you're feeding your family, then all of a sudden something happens and somebody gets hurt and they sue you and they take everything. What was the point in the first place? So just really encourage you to get that LLC and get your EIN to set up those separations mm -hmm. uh, between your business and your personal assets. Now, now, let me ask you just as an aside, do you, um, do you see that as the Monday piece because it's the most important or because it is kind of the foundation or it's kind of the foundation? Yeah. Cause everything else that's coming, like you have to have your EIN to set up things that you're going to do on Wednesday and Thursday. So do it Monday. That way you're ready to do Wednesday and Thursday. Perfect. All right. All right. So Tuesday. Tuesday. So that, and does that really take 15 minutes? Yeah. It, I will say caveat, some states are easier than others. Mm -hmm. So in Indiana, where I am, those two things together, absolutely 15 minutes. Because um, you really need like your address in order to do it and your business name. So you're going to have to figure out your business name. You can use your personal name right now. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, I really tried to stick to the the nitty gritty and not get yeah. fancy about things. Like I'm not worried about your target market, right? That's one of the things that you're supposed to do when you're starting a business, set up a business plan. You don't need that right now, but you do need an EIN in your LLC. So, uh, you know, I, I want to go back and address that just a little bit because it's something we talked about on Tuesday and it, it is something you will need for your first 15 minute piece of work that you're gonna, that's gonna set up your business. And that is your business name. And um, I went back and listened to what I said about that on Tuesday. And I kind of said, hey, listen, when I was setting up my business, I came out of the corporate world and I knew that I knew how to lead teams of website developers. I knew how I, that I knew how to plan and 
execute on these big projects. And then I knew that I had 26 years of experience teaching fitness and wearing a head mic and, and speaking in front of people. But I didn't go in and try to, um, you know, find a new word, like something that would combine those two things. I didn't try to like think of something fancy or what domain name hasn't been taken or how can I, you know, make some word that's like um, Kelly website had my, you know, <laughs> no, I, what I, I went into the office to create the LLC, which of course we're not going into the office now, we're doing it online. And I said, what am I going to call this thing? <laughs> and so my actual registered business name is Kelly Coulter and Associates. That does not mean that I can't have brands under that that are called something else. So Kelly Coulter and Associates is what my business entity is called. But if you look at my website, it's Coulter Web Pros. All of this stuff that I do with fitness professionals, it's Fit Pros something. Those are brands. So do not get all up in your head about what to name this business before you can register your EIN and your LLC. Just get it done. Yep. One of my favorite sayings is start simple, get, fan get fancy later. And that's exactly right. Like, oh, I love that. Start your, with your name and you can add, I mean, I added a DBA two weeks ago in about 15 minutes. It really doesn't take that long either. So, you know, and South Carolina um, won't even take DBA. So we don't even have to register them. Oh, okay. Even better. Which <laughs> causes problems at the bank until I sat them down and I, I use a credit union and they kept on saying, you're getting checks for culture web press. And I finally sat them down. I said, you guys, I've been everywhere. And please in the comments, tell me if I'm wrong, but I've been everywhere. I've, I've tried to register a DBA for Coulter Web Pros and for the Fit Pros stuff. Nobody will take it. So tell me what to do. So they finally, um, we, we came to a meeting of the minds on that. And the bigger banks probably already know. But yeah, really and that's one of those things that's just different by state. So yeah. like if you have specific state questions, I'm going to give you a link that you can get in touch with me and, and we can go through that. I'm happy to help. I just don't want to do it right now. We're <laughs> all 50 in an hour. <laughs> Um, so Tuesday's task, I want you to get really clear on your costs and not really clear, like you don't have to get nitty gritty on this, but I want to make sure that you're pricing to include things like credit card fees, because you're going to start accepting credit cards. That's going to be step three or four. And I want to make sure that your pricing is right, that you're not losing money because you're paying credit card fees. Um, so we call that reverse engineering. You can see Profit First behind me. I'm a huge believer, obviously, I'm a Profit First pro in that system. But one of the ways we do that is figure out what your operating costs are. If you're operating virtually, they may be very low, but you're still going to have like some sort of equipment expense or production expense. You know, even if it's just minor, it adds up over time. So figure out what those expenses are. Add in that 3% that you're going to be deducting from your revenue for your transaction fees. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're pricing accordingly. Um, so oh, that's Shannon, that one is so good. That is so good because that is so important. Um, you guys, I, as a website professional, I see people enter the business all the time and try to charge 35 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens? six months from now, they are not in the business anymore. It's going to be the same with fitness professionals. If you try to charge, um, I don't, I, you know, I can't even say what I think the baseline cost would be, but I'll do some research and I'll have it for you guys next week. Um, but if you go too low at first, if you're looking at it in the way that what will people pay or what is going to get the most people in my door rather than the right people in my door, then you're going to be too low. And then it's going to put you out of business and stress you out in the, in the meantime. Yeah. So here's a quick way. I think that you can figure out um, mm -hmm. what your pricing wants to be, what your pricing should be. Um, how much do you want to make an hour? Like take home to your family in an, for an hour. And I don't usually price on time because I think there's other ways to value your time. But this is a, just a quick start, get beginner, and then double it. Because that's mm -hmm. going to be your operating expenses. 50% should cover your operating expenses. It's not just your operating expenses. I also want you to be charging enough so that you can cover your tax bill at the end of the year. Kelly alluded to that earlier. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. But 
Um, so doubling, okay. like if you want to take home $35 an hour, you can't charge $35 an hour. You have to charge $70 an hour mm -hmm. so that you can pay those other fees. You can save, save some for taxes and profit and then take home $35. So good. So good. Um, I read, I think it was in the lean startup. Um, Wawa's coming to join us. Hey, Wawa. Um, I, I think it was in the lean startup. They said that you cannot be in business and charge less than a hundred dollars an hour for your time. And people think I'm crazy when I'm, when I say that, but a year into your business, you understand why. And that doesn't mean you're charging a hundred dollars an hour per student. That means if you think you're starting off with five, I don't know, five is not a good number. Let's say you're starting off at 20, then they need to be paying $5 a session. And then if you have 30 next month, great, you're making 150. Yeah. I'm gonna check and make sure we don't have any questions before we move on to Wednesday. So let me look here, you guys, stick your questions in the comments. Ha, huh, we do have some. Kelly Marshall says, hey, D is watching. She says, hey. And then Ted had some thoughts on naming. We will revisit those. Um, well, actually what he's saying is that you can't put any kind of other brand names or other trademark names into your yeah. LLC, which is a great point. Yeah, for sure. I do have one other point I wanna make about um, pricing and that whole idea is, as a business owner, there are huge advantages to being a business owner, right? And one of those is that you get to deduct expenses before you pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Whereas an employee, your taxes are withheld before you get your check, right? And then you have to say, oh, and here were my expenses. Now give me back some of that money that I've already paid in. So I just get a lot of pushback to sometimes about credit card fees. People don't want to pay credit card fees. They're trying to figure out ways around credit card fees. Those are deductible expenses to you. So that's why I say price accordingly, and then you get to deduct the expenses and you don't have to pay taxes before you get to deduct, deduct those expenses. So just look at it from that perspective instead of another fee that I have to pay somebody. Yeah, really great, great point. That 3%, it feels like a lot and it, it can feel like a little bit of a, a killer at times, but you do get to take that entire amount. You, I, I go into Stripe and I just look at what my fees were for the year and I deduct that as an expense and it, it helps. It will really move the needle on your taxes. And it's so much more convenient, right, Kelly, to accept credit card payments. I mean, come on, like, really is. how else would you do it? You know, if you can yeah. get to do an ACH payment, that's always going to be better. But mm -hmm. you know, I think right now you're trying to stay simple, right? Start simple. So credit cards are going to be the easiest way. And, you know, I have an opinion. I'd love to hear what your thought is. When she said ACH, she's talking about people putting their bank account information into your accounting software so that it draws a check from them instead of, um, uh, charging their credit card every month. Um, I, I think at some point they will probably start charging a percentage on those. Don't you? Um, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, they charge a flat fee right now. And so it's not like they're free, you know, they're just a lot, a lot more affordable. Um, so I don't know if they will or not. I don't know why they charge anything. Cause I can do a bank transfer for free between my own accounts. So it's not really work on their part, but <laughs> okay, so so Monday is setting up the EIN and the LLC. Tuesday is um, figuring out what your pricing model is going to be based realistically on all of the foreseen expectations. So making a list of every single thing that you think is going to be an expense and then figuring out your pricing. Yep. All right. Wednesday, we get to actually start accepting payments, right? And I just want to make sure that you're doing it through a business account. Um, so PayPal has business accounts. Use the business account. Um, Stripe is another one. There's plenty of payment processors out there that are really easy to get set up on. And that's all you have to do on Wednesday is figure out which payment processor you're going to use and get set up with them so that you can start accepting credit cards in your business name with your EIN. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and it really just means you didn't do Monday. What's that? You can't do it if you didn't do your stuff on Monday. Exactly. <laughs> and it just gives you protection. I mean, PayPal has protections for buyers, right? And so if you're doing that through a personal account, then there's just, there can just be issues if somebody wants a refund and things like that. So people will try to do that because there aren't fees on the personal accounts. Mm -hmm. um, but if PayPal catches you, 
you're in big trouble. So just do the right thing and get a business account for your PayPal account or whatever account you're going to use. So you're setting So on Wednesday, you're setting up a business account on PayPal or Stripe or somewhere that is, and both of those are kind of a combination of a bank account and a payment processor, right? Like you could leave your money in PayPal and not move it or just move it when you're going to do your um, allocations, but uh, you could also just leave it there or, or you can transfer it all to your bank account and then go from there. And you guys probably know you can use your PayPal account to purchase things too. So if you, I actually have a debit card, a a PayPal business debit card. And um, as soon as somebody pays me, if I needed to go and spend that money, I could. Yeah. I don't really recommend it, but it is, that is a way you can manage money. Especially for instructors who, and and us right now who are, um, we've had a complete income stoppage. And so some people are ready to get 40 bucks from somebody who would have been paying them at the gym and then go and get some groceries, buy gas, whatever they need to do. Yep. Not that we're going anywhere. Right. (laughs) Yeah. And just to that point, Kelly, I would make sure that you're only using your business account for business expenses, because remember that, that LLC that we set up, um, that's that calls what we that creates what we call a shield around your your business and personal assets, right? Like we just talked, we, like we talked about on Monday. If you start using your business account for personal expenses, you can do what's called piercing the veil, and it kind of negates all of those protections. So if you need money from your business account to buy groceries, like you will, because it's your income. I get that. Like that's how I feed my family too but I transfer it to my personal account and then I go use my debit card there. So um, just use your business PayPal account to purchase business expenses. Or very, very important. Super important. Yeah, just caught that one there. So. Okay, so Thursday. So Thursday, I want you to set up real bank accounts. <laughs> so yes. So you're not recommending that the money sits at PayPal. I'm not recommending that it sits at PayPal. PayPal can act as your income account. Um, where you get all of your money and it sits there until you're ready. You made the word, you used the word allocations. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but um, that's what we call it in Profit First World. We allocate from our income account into four other accounts. And so it could be your income account, then you wouldn't spend any money from it though. Mm -hmm. Um, Or you can set up a a real income account at your bank. But I, I just want you to have a relationship it's, it's been so important to people r- right now to have a relationship with a banker. And so I want you to set up that bank account at a bank where you can just have some sort of relationship. Like mine's all electronic. I've never met the person that I'm emailing, but I was emailing him two months ago about something completely different. When I needed to email him about this whole PPP thing, I had his email address and I didn't have to just call the 1-800 number. So it's just really important to have a name, a business card of somebody at your bank. So set up a bank account. Um, and I'm actually going to recommend, I kind of alluded to it, that you have five total bank accounts. Um, so do you want me to go into why all five bank accounts? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yes. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about it. Okay. So profit first is why you need five bank accounts. It's all about managing your cash and The whole idea is that you give your cash a purpose before you spend it. Um, So it's kind of like Dave Ramsey for business. You have envelopes for your business, but they're bank accounts instead of envelopes. Mm -hmm. So the first one is your income account. And like I said, if all you're doing at PayPal is accepting money, that could be your income account. And then you can transfer from there to your other bank accounts Although I don't think that will work because you can only have PayPal linked to one business account. So you'd have to transfer. So you're better off to have five actual bank accounts. The first one's gonna be your income account. This is good to have anyways, because once you get back into your brick and mortar, if people pay you in cash or checks, or if you start to accept money from MindBody and PayPal and Stripe, then it can all accumulate into your income account. So I would really recommend you get an income account at your bank. That's where all your money is gonna accumulate. And then I want you to have a profit account. So I know right now it kind of sounds crazy to think about a profit because 
we just want to feed our family, right? But I always want you to be profitable too. And that means just putting 1% aside so that you start to build a rainy day fund. You guys, the people who had a rainy day fund a month ago were in a completely different place than the people who had been scraping by up until that point. So even if it's just 1%, be saving 1%. And even now, be saving 1%. Because the thing is, if you're if you don't have that 1%, you will find a way to spend it, right? If you don't put it in a profit account, you'll find something. If you don't have it available to you, so you learn to live without it mm-hmm. is really what it comes down to. So the yeah. second account is your profit account. The third account is a tax account. This is what we talked about. You're a business owner now and you're gonna have to pay taxes because you're gonna be profitable. I don't want you to get to next April when taxes are due and be crying and scrambling because you don't have any money saved. Mm -hmm. So just start saving a percentage right now so that when that comes due, you're like, yeah, here's the money. And look, I have extra saved there and I get my tax return out of my own bank account instead of having to wait for the bank or for the IRS to send it back. So that's the third one is your tax. And you know, that, that right there just cuts down on so much crying and screaming and gnashing of teeth. When you have got that, that percentage, you've already put it aside. And then your accountant comes to you and says, you owe $8,000. You're not like, oh my gosh, where am I supposed to come up with that? I've spent all the money in my business. You just transfer it over your operating and pay it. And it's like, oh my gosh, I have done something right in my life. (laughs) Yep, exactly. Yeah. My story is that one year I couldn't pay my own tax bill. So I understand what that's like. This was before I knew about Profit First. Um, And so I'm a firm believer that you have to be saving every single time you get money into your business. Mm -hmm save a portion of it so you don't end up in that position. Um, And then finally, your fourth account is your owner's pay account. This is what you are running your business for right now, right? So that you can have that pay for yourself. Like I said, the target is 50% for for small businesses, right? For a lot of solopreneurs, for most of the people I'm guessing that are watching this, um, 50% of your income should be going into your owner's pay. And that's really money that you get to transfer into your personal bank account and spend. Um, And we could talk about continuing to put 50% there, even if you don't need all of it, so that you have a rainy day fund for your personal expenses too. Um, But really the idea is just have, make sure you're paying yourself because a lot of times we see fit pros and fit businesses, especially that just put everything back into the business, Mm -hmm. everything back into their staff and hiring people. And then they're like, well, I don't have anything. And they get run out really fast and close up businesses a lot. So um, that's why the owner paid one. And you did it because I interrupted you. So I apologize, but you didn't talk about the operating account. Because that's the last one. Oh, sorry. Nope, that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, because the final account is your operating expense account. And that's where you pay all your bills from. But it is the last one to get allocated to. Like everything else gets taken care of first Mm -hmm. because what's left is what you have to spend. And you guys, you're all in online businesses right now. And the overhead is so low. And I know some of you may have studios that you still are trying to pay rent on and things like that. So it may be a little bit different right now. Mm -hmm. But the whole idea is that when you have less in your operating expense account, you'll learn to live off of less. And mm-hmm. so I love talking to brand new business owners about this program, because yes. if you can start your business with these habits, then your expenses don't get out of control and you will learn to run a lean business that's super profitable. It's so different to, to have started out like that and know that I've, I've got an account where I can just transfer money as kind of my pay every month. And then that profit account is huge too, because when you can go in once in a quarter and take like a little fun money. So I think, and tell me if I'm getting this wrong, but my interpretation of what the book said was every quarter you can go in and take half of your profit account. And then you can go like to dinner or, you know, once it starts getting bigger, you can take a trip with it or do whatever. That's your allocation that you get to take. And so it's, it's a way to structure your money so that things become more stable. You're not spending all of your money on the business. You know how much the business has to spend and no more, no less. And then the rest of it is for, for taxes, profit, and owner's pay. 
And those things are all getting paid. Because let me tell you, it gets real old real quick when you look and you realize you have not paid yourself a salary in three months, six months, a year. That is not motivation to stay in business. Yeah, for sure. And it's just so much easier to start it off at the beginning and start with those good habits than it is. I always equate this to like people who want to lose weight right? Um, you know, if, if we could never have the bad habit of eating all the sugar that we have, wouldn't it be so much easier to stay healthy, right? But we just have accumulated that habit. And, and so now we have to break that habit. And mm-hmm. money in business is the same way. When you've let your operating expenses get out of control, it's really hard to reduce them because we become attached to the things that we have and the systems that we have. So we can't start off with the system. It's so much easier. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. All right. so I have a bonus, bonus one that I'm going to throw in here. If you've applied for any type of government assistance in the last month, I would recommend you get a separate bank account for that loan money as well. So that's my bonus, like six, number six tip, I guess. Um, if I'm only given five. <laughs> I love that. Tell me um, about, about the why and the how. Yeah. So especially for the PPP loan that I feel like a lot of people are applying for, um, that loan might be forgiven. It's capable of being forgiven, right? But at the end, you're going to have to prove that you spent at least 75% of that loan money on payroll. If it's in a separate account and you can show like this was a payroll deduction, this was a payroll deduction, you can be like, here's my bank statements for the two months since I've had that account and that money it's pretty hard for a bank to argue with you about what you spent the money on. Okay. If it's co-mingled with your current operating expenses and see my little puppy back there in the background. <laughs> um, if it, to visit today. Yeah, they are. Um, if it's co-mingled, then it's easier for the bank to say, oh, well, you spent it on this. So we're not going to forgive your loan. And then you're stuck with, with that. So just, um, and actually some big banks, I think Bank of America or U.S. Bank, I can't remember which one, maybe it's a completely different bank, is actually requiring that these funds go into a brand new bank account. So um, just because your bank isn't requiring it doesn't mean it's not a really good practice. And nice. And um, I, I do mine through a credit union, which isn't the best way to do it because they don't have great business tools through a credit union, or especially through my credit union, at least. But they do allow me to have four of those be savings accounts. And then the only one that is a checking account is operations. Yep. Um, so everything has to, if I'm paying somebody or whatever, it has to go into the operations and then out. But um, I, I think that can make a difference sometimes because some banks will charge differently based on whether it's a savings account or a checking account. So. Yeah. Yeah. You have to find a bank that's going to work with you basically. Okay, so I've got a question here for you from Rocky. She had said, um, and Rocky, I may need to ask you to explain a little bit, but she said, I always buy an IRA to offset my taxes and keep for retirement. And Mm -hmm. um, I I know that that's something we will go into a little bit more when we get into the accounting portion of the course, as well as the five bank accounts. We'll talk about that more. Um, And then she said, need nothing, not going anywhere. Love, I, I love the comment, but I, I, um, I don't know if that was a question. And then she said, unemployment question mark. Is she, Rocky, I think you were saying, you were asking um, at what point are we paying into unemployment? Is that what you were asking? I'm guessing she's more asking, can she claim unemployment as a business owner? Because that's right a big now. question right now. In, okay. In the um, so yes, as a business owner, you can claim unemployment. This is also different state by state. And it's it's brand new, like only for the last month, have you been able to do that? And I haven't seen a state yet that is ready to, to process those unemployment claims correctly. So it's a big headache, um, but absolutely, like if you're not working and if you're not, um, if you don't have a PPP loan yet, if you have a PPP loan, you shouldn't be on unemployment. But if you don't have that, um, you can absolutely go through the process. You're gonna have to appeal is what it comes down to which means you're going to have to sit on hold and you're going to have to, you know, talk to them and explain to them that you're a business owner. And I don't know what the process looks like for any state and it's different between every state, but yeah, you can claim unemployment. So it can be done. It's probably going to require a human being rather than just the electronic process. And um, 
I don't know. It may, may be worth it, may not, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the federal program is $600 a week. So, you know, it depends, I guess, on your situation. All right, beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so that takes us through, was that Wednesday or Thursday? That was Thursday. All right. So Friday, I want you to find some kind of accounting software, some way to track all of your expenses. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just one of those things that is so much easier to keep up with than it is to, to um, get caught up with next December or January when you're trying to file your tax returns. Mm -hmm. It's so necessary in order to be able to file your tax returns. So find one. Um, I'm going to recommend QuickBooks Online because that's what we use and I believe they're really good and it's, I find it very intuitive. Some people don't and there's plenty of other softwares out there, but I would just say find a true accounting software that's going to give you both an, a profit and loss statement, shows you all of your income and all of your expenses and a balance sheet so that you're tracking your checking accounts too. Because I just told you you're going to have five bank accounts and we want to be able to track all of the income and all of the transactions in those accounts all the time. Um, so there are some quasi accounting softwares out there. I just want to warn you against those. If they don't have you putting every transaction in from your bank accounts and reconciling your bank accounts, find a different accounting software. So QBO, QuickBooks Online, and Xero are the two that I really recommend. Nice. Yeah. Nice. The other day I talked about mine, and I think mine would probably go in your pile of don'ts. Um, I use Zoho and I, I use, I use Zoho invoice. Um, and so it's a really kind of generic accounting software, but it does not have me going in. It doesn't kind of like go back and forth between my bank account and reconcile in any way. So yeah. it might be a conversation you and I need to have. Yep, for sure. Like I know, I believe mind body, maybe I want to say like Zen planner. There's a couple other, um, club management softwares, if you will, that you can put your expenses in and it will run a PL for you. Mm -hmm. but how do you know that you've captured all of your expenses? It's really relying right. on you to do a lot of manual entry. Yeah. It just isn't necessary. Because And that's, that's what I always miss. I, I leave it in my email thinking I'll delete it after I put it in and then it just never makes it in. Right. Exactly. Like that's what we all say. Like accounting gets put to the very end. It is why I left it to Friday because it's not absolutely necessary. Um, and truth be told, if you don't do it until next month, okay, but make sure you get it done sooner rather than later because- At like, some point it's gonna make your life easier. Yeah. The people who call me in January and are like, oh my God, I have 12 months worth of transactions to enter and I'm gonna have to like, I'm gonna have to clear my calendar for two or three days to get it done. And they yeah. do, that's what it takes. So who wants to do that? in January. Remember, yeah. it's January, like you're busy in January, right? You've got other things going on in January. In December, the holidays, you don't want to be doing it. Yeah. Just well, that's a great point, especially with fitness professionals. If you're trying to file your taxes at the beginning of the year and the first six weeks of the year are the busiest that we can imagine, then the last thing you want to do is also be trying to enter expenses. Right. So just exactly. get it set up now. Yeah. And I'll say too, like, I remember what I spent money on last week, right? Like mm. I can probably piece together. I mean, obviously now I didn't spend any money last week, but <laughs> the further that gets away, I don't remember what I did in February. Mm. I can't piece that together. So it requires more research when you do it that way. Beautiful. Yeah. I have one bonus tip on that. You should also Please. be tracking any um, COVID-19 expenses. Just really important to keep track of any extra expenses because of the current situation that we're in. Um, we don't know what tax credits could become available because of that um, or you know, programs, or even if we're, you know, a year from now, we're looking back. The whole point of accounting software is that we can look back and see how we did and maybe think about project how we're gonna do next month or whatever compared to last year. We just wanna be able to pull those expenses out and say, those aren't gonna repeat. Those were additional expenses. That is a great one. That's really good. Yeah. Add that expense account in there when you're doing your accounting. Beautiful. Okay. So we got our five days in line. We, we got the EIN and the LLC registered. We um, reverse engineered so that we could pick the right pricing scheme, not just the cheapest pricing scheme that we think our people can afford. Um, 
I missed one somewhere because then I went to business accounts, but I think Wednesday was setting up a, a business payment processor. Payment processor. Yes. Uh, whatever it is. I'll stripe. Um, and so, and that is what you're going to hook in. So if you go through the course with us, you guys, the virtual studio now course, the payment processor is what you're going to hook in with your membership management so that your members are paying you that payment is able to be processed and then you're able to let them into your online sessions. And so then number four is the business bank account with the bonus loan assistance bank account. Rocky asked here, when we talked about unemployment, would you take the unemployment and put that into a completely separate account if you get it? No, that's personal money. So it should never even go into your business account at all. Ah, so that can just go into your personal bank account. Yeah. Household expenses bank account. Yeah, exactly. Okay, beautiful. And then, um, and then Friday was... Your accounting software. Accounting software, thank you. <laughs> and then um, your bonus tip was track all expenses related to COVID-19. Yeah. So that would be deep cleaning the gym. That would be buying new yoga mats. What about buying an inventory of yoga mats that are going to be sold as personal yoga mats? When we had Sarah um, Cooperman on uh, last week or the week, it was the week before. And we started talking a little bit about what will gyms and gym management look like after COVID-19. One of the things that she said is you will not see any more communal yoga mats. So if you're a yoga instructor, go out and buy cash of them now and, and sell them if uh, to the people who are, 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 so if you're buying an inventory of stuff like that, can, would you put that in that category or Put it in the, the category of a COVID-19 expense. No, I wouldn't because I mean, honestly, that, that's an advanced profit first account where if you're going to get um, reimbursed for something, we could call that like a cost of sales or cost of goods sold account because um, you're going to be reimbursed for it. But it's an operating expense because you're going to get you're going to get reimbursed for it. So gotcha. All right. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Those yeah. were Awesome. I, my goal with this week and talking about business setup was to make it actionable. Um, I talked a lot on Tuesday about how, when you say that you're going to go into business or when you go into business, you will have people coming at you left and right saying, have you done this? You've got to do it this way. And just throwing like roadblocks and roadblocks. And I, I don't know why exactly people are like that other than, uh, I mean, I know your parents are going to come at you a certain way because they're scared for your security. And, um, you know, other people, maybe they tried and failed or whatever, but there's a million reasons, but people will come at you with roadblock, roadblock, roadblock. roadblock. And I wanted to come in and say, y'all, this is all figure outable and this is all doable. And this is, these are some ways that you can break these things down and make it happen. If this is what you want to do, we can make it happen. Rocky says you have to write off hand sanitizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots of hand sanitizer. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, Shannon and I are I have actively worked together and have created a course. It's called Virtual Studio Now. We are going to talk a little bit more about it next week, but we are opening registration on it today. Um, Virtual Studio Now will, the, the goal is that in three weeks, you will have your business completely set up. You will have your website if you do your homework you will have your website, you will have your membership management, and you will have your method of um, delivering virtual sessions all in one place. So your members go to your website, they see your schedule, they say, I wanna do this class, they either pay for that class or they pay for the whole month and it is done. It goes through your payment processor to your bank account that you set up. You know what you're doing with that money after it goes into your bank account, um, you know where your allocations are going to go. So all of that stuff is set up and ready to go. So three weeks, it's we're going to do it boot camp style because I know you guys are ready to get this done. If, if you want to do it, you want to do it. So 
Um, we opened the cart today. We're going to talk about it next week. If you go ahead and register, I'm going to schedule a call with you. I'm going to talk to you during the week at some point next week so that we know, Shannon and I know exactly where you are in your, your business setup process and what you want to be doing. So that way we've had a personal conversation with each person the week after we start doing the class. So two sessions a week. There may be more sessions depending on if you guys need extra help, need walked through something specific. Maybe you guys just want to have like, you know, a breakout session where five of us are just chatting about something specific, but it's, it's three weeks. It's intense. It's us getting it done so that at the end of three weeks, you are up and running with your virtual studio that is set up correctly. Yay. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for you guys to have that all done in a month's time. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. It is going to be so good. So good. I cannot wait. So here's how we're doing this. Um, I, so when, when I first started talking with this, with you guys about doing this, I was talking about it in terms of, I wanted to create a website that like automated all this. Thank you for saying that. She said it, it sounds like a terrific way to start. And yes, I, I think it's going to be a terrific way to start. You're gonna, and we're also going to end up with a group of people who did this all together and you're bonded and you can bounce ideas off of each other. We'll have a Facebook group where we can all get together and, and talk and then keep that conversation going. Okay. When I first started talking about this, my idea was I'm going to go to a, my developers and I'm going to say, make this um, automated way so that somebody can go in and like type in some things. And then it creates the website and the member portal and it integrates Zoom and has all that stuff. And then as I talked to you guys more and more, I really realized that you don't need the automation as much as you need to be led through it and feel like you've got a team member working with you on this. And so that's why I said, let me back up on that automated virtual studio now piece and let's do a course and get a group together. And that's when I brought Shannon in and said, hey, these are the pieces that I'm not strong on. Can you please teach these pieces? And she graciously agreed to do that. So we are doing this as a group. At some point, maybe later on, we might do that automated piece, but I think you guys need the information more than you need the tool. I, I feel like if you just got the tool that you would really just kind of like set it up and then it would just sit there. So this is the way that you're going to get it set up and then actually be using it and, and actually making a, a business that's gonna work. Ah, all right, so today I do not have the website for registration set up yet. I had planned to get you guys in there and say that the first eight people were going to get this course for $416. Um, and the regular price is going to be $616. So I was going to take the first eight that went from this live to that site and registered and make them 416. Um, the, the site, I, we got in a little crunch getting it ready. And so it's not going to be ready till later today. So if you want that 416 price and you want to register today and you know this is something that you are ready to act on, what I'm going to do is just have you go to my PayPal and register by just paying. And I, I know that's a little down and dirty, but that is how we have been doing business as fitness professionals in the last month. So if you are sure that you want to do this, just go ahead and go there and pay. The next step is going to be that I'm going to send you a link to schedule a call with me. And then we're going to talk through where you are with your business. If you are um, still considering it and you're really excited, um, but you're not ready to go to my PayPal and just send me $400, which <laughs> I think could be a, a large majority, then great. I want you to put your email address into the comments and that way I can email you. The link is going to be virtualstudionow.com. 
but um, it's it's not there yet. So I'm almost afraid we've gone down. You guys, are we still showing? Because I'm seeing a little wheel of death on my my iPad. So put your put your um, email into the comments. Yeah, it looks like we're still getting comments. So great. Okay, put your email into the comments. If you're not comfortable putting your email into the comments, direct message me. Give me your email address. That way I can email you and we'll have a list of people that we are sending updates to. So we're going to get everybody registered. If I get eight registrations in my PayPal, then the price is just going to go up to the 616. If, um, if we've still got some left when we open the cart, then I'll open it with that many available. And then we will take registrations this week and next, and we will start teaching it next week. And you're going to end this four weeks from now with everything set up. Right, Shannon? So cool. Yes. <laughs> everything set up and ready to go. I'm so, I'm so excited about it. You can see my face is red. I get so excited when I start talking about it, but you guys, I just think it's going to be really good. It's, it's not for everybody, not all, and not everybody watching, not everybody in our group wants to start their own business. A lot of us are really sad because we're not in the gym right now teaching. And all we like to do is go teach and get a, a check. And that's great. But for those of you who are really into this idea of teaching virtually and making a little bit of extra money with it, or if you're into the idea of making it your complete business, or if you've got another product that you want to sell. Awesome. Let's do it. And Kelly, we talked about if they want to connect with me and ask more questions about me, um, I will put my Facebook group link. Where do I, do I do that in the Facebook group, not in Zoom, right? Yes, put it into the comments here. I'll also do kind of a summary post and I'll do a summary post, um, a summary article at fitprosconnect.com that talks about both of these Facebook sessions. So any of the links that you want us to put in there, we will gladly put in there. Shannon also does do a course on her own that is just about accounting. And if that's what you need, let's talk about that for a second. Do you mind? Yeah, so that course is actually all about profit first, um, yeah. and it's it's how to set up profit first in your business. So yeah, if that's something you need, um, we do very open specific, or very specific open enrollment periods for that. Um, so still go ahead and um, join the group. I'll put the link in the, the Facebook comments because um, that's where we run the the challenge through, and and you start to get information from there. We we talk about profit first. I mean, the name of the group is Profit First for Fitness Business Owners. Okay, so that's really the topic. Although the reason I brought it up now too is we did not talk about government assistance really at all, just that it's out there. That's the topic that's dominating that group right now. So if you have questions about um, government assistance, you can go into that group and there's a ton of posts already about it, some updates and things like that. And then if you have additional questions, because like I said, I know we didn't talk about it and there's a lot of questions and a lot of misinformation going around about it. So tell me the name of that group again. That's a Facebook group and it's called... Profit first for fitness business owners. Love it. Yeah. Profit first for fitness business owners. It's a separate Facebook group. It is run by Shannon. Yep. Correct. It is. Yep. And I just put the link in, yeah, in the comments there. So um, Tad asked if the course is going to cover legal issues like music licensing, copyright rights, and liability insurance. So I did talk to Denise about coming in and doing maybe a half of the session. And she is kind of our music licensing expert. So um, if, if we have got time and um, there is interest in that topic, once we get in, then we will do that because I think it's really gonna depend on who we've got in there and what exactly they're doing with their business. Otherwise, we've got tons of resources on the music licensing piece. Um, the insurance, yes, we, we will talk about how to obtain insurance and then the homework will be that you do obtain insurance for your business. And Shannon just put her group link up. So great. We've got that. Rocky liked the business song. Did you go back and watch? Okay, you guys, everybody, here's your homework. You have to go to YouTube and type in Flight of the Concords business song. And 
and then watch it because you're going to really like it. Okay, so I think we have talked about everything. If they need that profit first course, that information when the cart opens will go into that Facebook group, correct? Yep, exactly. Beautiful. Okay. You guys, I, I think we have got it all covered for now. Let me know what you want to hear me talking about next week. And if you've got suggestions for guests, let me bring Shannon on one more time so we can talk a little bit more about our course. Okay. And um, you guys send me all your questions about the course. If you've got questions for Shannon, she's available on Facebook as well. And you can just click on her name and then press message and message her. I hope I, I didn't clear that with you, but it's okay yeah. to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would rather have it in the group. I do have a team of people. Like I have a team that we work together for coaching profit first. So I'd rather have it in the group because we share that and it makes it a little bit more manageable. As you grow an online business, you will realize like you're kind of on call all the time and you can kind of become I completely consumed. <laughs> Yeah. So we have a team and we bounce that around. So you're going to get the, the fact of the matter is you're going to get a faster response if you put it in the group. And you also get some real life experience from people who are maybe doing this already because I'm not a fit pro. I'm not a fit pro business owner. I've been working with you guys for five years and I own my own business. So I understand some aspects and a lot of aspects, but getting real life experience is, all, is sometimes just as valuable. So you get that in the group too. Love it. Beautiful. So go to the group. That's the best, that's the best place to reach in and to get reached that, that information. Yep. Okay. Y'all so send me, send me all of your questions, send me your email addresses so that I can get you on a list. I will not spam you. I will just put you on the list specific to the course. Okay. All right. Thank Love you, you guys. Really. Shannon, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, good to be here. Thank you for having me. See you guys in the course. All right.